Hello everyone, this is Ryan and Daniel's Independent Asexual Reproduction Lab. The purpose of this lab is to determine the effect of different pH levels on yeast growth. In case anybody doesn't know, pH is a scale used to measure how acidic or alkaline, which is the opposite of acidic, a water-based solution is. The more acidic something is, the lower the pH level is. The more alkaline something is, the higher the pH level is. The neutral pH level is 7. Anyways, in this lab, you will need pH paper to measure the pH, normal tap water, sugar, yeast, 5 beakers, a compound light microscope, mount and cover slides, a scale, pipettes, scupulas, baking soda or so sodium bicarbonate as the alkaline part, and white vinegar or diluted acetic acid as the acidic part. We used black vinegar because we didn't have white vinegar. Black vinegar is made out of fermented rice, but will have the same pH and same overall effect as white vinegar. First, measure out five portions of five grams of yeast for the individual samples. We measured out seven because I forgot how to count. Next, if you have cubed sugar instead of powdered sugar like us, grind it up with a mortar and pestle. Now that you have crushed the sugar, measure five portions of six grams of sugar. We actually measured five portions this time because I know how to count. In the beakers, measure out 80 milliliters of tap water each. Mix in six grams of sugar to each of them. We left one as is as our control and measured its pH with our pH paper. It had a pH of four. Next, Add various amounts of vinegar and baking soda to the different beakers to change the pH levels of the sugar solution in them, and measure the pH levels with your pH paper. We created samples with pH levels of 3, 4, 6, 7, and 8. We used a lot of vinegar and a lot of baking soda, but we couldn't change the pH levels any further. Sad. Next. Add 5 grams of yeast to the different solutions, and mix until no more clumps are visible. We forgot to record this part because I have the memory of a carrot. Leave the yeast alone for 2 hours while you go to your other classes and think about your life decisions. 2 hours later. Record any observations. For us, pH numbers 7 and 8's yeast created lots of gas and rose much more compared to the yeast in other pH levels, as you can see in the image shown right now. Prepare two wet mount slides of the yeast so you can have a larger amount of data compared to just one wet mount slide, and view the yeast under the microscope in medium power. Record any observations. Wait another two hours while you go to your other classes and think about your life decisions. Two hours later. Once again, prepare two wet mount slides for the three hour old yeast and view them from the microscope in medium power. After gathering all the data, calculate the percentage of the field of view the yeast takes up. This will give you a general idea as to how much the yeast has grown. We use computer software called Krita to select around the yeast and fill it with a strong color like red. This is to make sure that the dumb computer won't confuse the color as another shade of black. Then, we save the picture and upload it to a nifty PHP tool that calculated the percentage each color took up. We subtracted the black from the total amount of colors, as that was not what we were finding, and calculated the percentage of the rest of colors in each picture, and this was done to all our images. In all our findings, we found that the yeast's population was the greatest when it was put in an environment where the pH was around neutral or 7. Though we couldn't create an environment with a pH level higher than that of 8 and lower than 3, we can clearly see that the yeast grew the fastest in neutral acidity, shown here in the bar graph that we made. And here are our calculations. You can pause if you need more time to see them.